Hello, welcome back to another video. As you read in the title, I'm going to be doing a bit of gouache painting today and finishing the last spread in my sketchbook. If you watched my last video, you already got a sneak peek of what I'll be painting today. And in addition to the painting, I will be explaining my process and answering your questions regarding gouache in kind of like a casual tutorial style video. I will be using acrylic gouache, which is a little different from traditional gouache, as well as this is just how I personally use the medium and what works best for me. I always encourage anyone who's learning basically anything to watch from like multiple different artists to get more opinions and perspectives on a topic so you can really get a holistic picture about the subject. I also wanted to quickly mention that the October sticker of the month is here. It's a super cute to ghost cowboys on a horse. I really like it. It's one of my most favorite sticker designs. And if you sign up during any time of the month of October, you will receive this. I will ship them out the first week of November. And you'll also receive other benefits like have early access to new artwork, uh, new videos, sketches that I don't share anywhere else, and a lot more benefits. So make sure to go check it out. So I have my original sketch over here of Bill and Saul. It's just a cute little pumpkin carving drawing that I really wanted to do to finish off my sketchbook and just complete the book with a fun sketchbook spread. Of I just scanned it with my scanner, put on my iPad, and just have been messing around with it a little bit in Procreate. So the colors I'm planning are kind of like fall themed to go with the general mood of carving pumpkins and general like fall activities so it's very warm. So for this particular painting I'm thinking about doing either like a maybe like a yellow or an orange underpainting to really bring that warm and that just cozy heat warm mood if that makes sense. So I have the general color mock-up right here but for when I'm working on it here I'm gonna do a I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a orange underpainting and then reference back to these colors as I'm working on this and just yeah get started and same thing with the uh, the color studies we did thinking about value first and really making sure there's enough contrast with these colors quick thing I like to do is just save a copy of this uh, of this mock-up and then go to my um, photos and then go to my photos and edit it and reduce the saturation and see how well the values show up with this piece now I can see that it's like pretty Pretty, these these values are pretty close. I may bump up the contrast a little bit and what you can do is just try and see where you can make things darker or lighter. But yeah, that's value is your best friend. Keep your values clear. And as you can see, I made Bill and Saul a lot darker than the background. And typically you wanna make your subject stand out from their background. Um, this can change. You might wanna keep your like subject hidden if that's your purpose, but for like a clear character-based illustration, I feel like it's good to keep them separate from the background as well as um what else objects in the background tend to get lighter like those clouds and those extra pumpkins in the background i do plan on painting their pumpkins down there i just haven't sketched it out yet i i already know what they're gonna look like so i'm not gonna go through the trouble of doing all that but yeah here's the general mock-up starting off simple nothing too fancy and just seeing where it will go but yeah here this will be like my, my color reference and then um the actual piece right over here so let's get started okay so like i said i'm just gonna do an orange um underpainting for this one i really want that warm cozy feeling and just want to illuminate these two characters i feel like when you do like a light warm bright underpainting it can kind of make characters glow so that's what i'm really going for so i'm gonna go ahead i just sketched this out in graphite so super simple just covering everything up i haven't necessarily figured out what i'm gonna do for the background i might just leave it the color of the page i kind of like that off-white cream color it has. I also thought about um, taking some ink and painting it all like black, like silhouette the figures. I don't know, we'll see. There's always like, you can always take a picture of it and then go back into Procreate or Clip Studio or Photoshop and kind of test out colors if you're unsure. That's what I like to do a lot of the time. Yeah, using digital like means to like help your traditional painting i i don't think it's something to be ashamed of because i use it all the time i know other artists use it all the time it's super helpful and if you have these tools that can make the process easier or faster or get rid of some anxiety with picking colors i feel like you should use it and if it means that you're making more artwork i feel like that's a win i always find this this point of like painting just doing the underpainting super calming because you're just filling in lines I've been I've had this sketched out for like a couple weeks now so it's it's nice to finally be able to start working on it 
yeah, I just opened my shop September 1st. I want to thank everyone who has bought stickers or prints or supported me in any way with the memberships or just sharing um, my shop announcements. It really helps a lot and it was a really great shop launch and I'm packing orders tomorrow so I can't wait to get them out to you guys. And then hopefully this one, if I like it enough, it might be a part of the October launch. So that could be fun, but no pressure just having fun in my sketchbook. I think by the time this video comes out, the sketchbook tour of this sketchbook might be come, might have come out already. So finally actually finishing the sketchbook. Yeah, this is just uh, two characters of mine, Bill and Saul, carving pumpkins. They are sort of like fantasy cowboys, which is kind of ridiculous, but uh, that's the whole point. I, I wanted to create these fun cowboy characters and they basically become like mascots of my channel. I, I paint and draw them a lot and they're just really fun. And it was fun thinking about what, how would, how would they carve pumpkins? What, what type of designs they would go for? And if you've seen my like shop or my Instagram posts, you would see the designs already. So Saul took more of a goofy approach of drawing a, um, or carving a silly face on his pumpkin, but it's, I think it's super cute, super endearing, and I know it's a great mark of his character. Just kind of more uh, funny, easygoing, sort of. And then Bill, being a little bit more reserved, takes a more artistic and expressive approach. Definitely not um, a self-insert character. <laughs> kind of more quiet, so I figured he would really take time to like put his best into this pumpkin carving and express himself. And I would think with his background of like having a more um, wealthy family, he might have had some like drawing or painting classes or instructors growing up and being educated. So I figured he would know his way around a brush, but in this case, like a scalpel and being able to wield that like a brush. I'm gonna hint at a little bit of value with this one. I already made uh, some of Bill a little bit darker because I want him to, I want him and uh, Saul to be like separate from each other, just minimally, se minimally separate. And then um, maybe doing this, these background elements a little bit lighter since when you're painting or drawing anything, if you make something lighter, it tends to fall back in our minds. Like we view it as farther in the distance due to atmospheric perspective and the way our eyes perceive things. Um, light air pollutants unfortunately and like other things and just general atmospheric perspective um things get bluer and lighter as they go into the background so it's a simple trick in painting to make things slightly cooler and lighter when they're in the background and then uh in the reverse really warm things tend to like uh come up to the like pop out at us in our eyes and when viewing images and also darker things being more in the foreground really help to aid in like the visual depth you're trying to achieve. But those are just generalities. You could probably uh, trick people into thinking. You could probably um, change those rules and experiment with them and find new ways. But that's what I've learned the past couple years of painting and it's, it's been working for me. I'm not gonna paint these guys down here yet. I'm just gonna focus on this and see how that goes. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna get into like the more um, local colors or true colors of the my plan and show that process as I answer some of your guys' questions. I was going to paint and speak at the t same time, but I have great difficulty in drawing, focusing on art and speaking at the same time. So we're gonna do a voiceover. So yeah, we're gonna switch to that after this dries. Now moving on to actually starting a painting, sketching, and trying to keep the original idea that you want. So that 70 Soda over on Instagram asked, I don't really know how to start a painting project. What do I need to plan out a piece? Thank you for your question, Soda. And also, hi. Soda and I are like mutuals on Instagram and they have amazing artwork and you guys should check them out. But anyways, I get you. It can be really overwhelming to know where to start and how to get, how to get things ready to set up for a good foundation to 
where you want to be with painting and what you want the painting to be. So first, I think you want to establish your idea, maybe compile some color inspiration, character references, scene inspiration, maybe on a Pinterest board or collaging images together and like procreate or something like that. This could also be like clothing references or objects that you want to include that you don't know how to draw from memory and that could help inspire different compositions and make it feel less daunting to try and like draw them. Once I come up with a certain idea, I do a couple really rough small sketches to explore the idea, not really thinking too much about details and mainly thinking about the feeling and the subject of what I want to depict, kind of just like vomiting on the paper and just like doing a bunch of sketches and doodles. I think I did this with my cooking illustration, just like drawing different poses I think the characters could be in or like different like objects I want to include. Kind of just like really taking the inspiration from like the board that I would make or the compilation of references that I um, put together and making, I don't know, just feeling inspired by that and just kind of like vomiting on the paper all the ideas. And then so after I have a couple sketches to draw inspiration from, I think about the dimensions that I want the painting to be. So like that's your canvas size and like the ratio of the composition and trying to figure out a scene that could fit into that into that dimension successfully. So this thumbnailing process I do usually consists of like sketching out three to five ideas, maybe more, maybe less. Just depends on how quickly it gets, how quickly it takes me to get to the idea that I want. I always try to do like if I do like a thumbnail that I really like at first, I always try to do more. So like just in case I like stumble upon an idea or figure out an idea that I like better. So like so like more exploration and things that I didn't even think of could like come out of the process and I end up liking more than what I originally had planned. So it's trying to figure out what best narrates the story of what I want to tell with a painting and what what composition best like and it I think it's subjective. I mean, there are some like good composition rules and stuff like that, but it's really up to you and what you like. In my opinion, I think if you really like a composition, you should go for it and yeah. Okay, that's it for thumbnailing. Okay, moving on. I take that really rough thumbnail sketch and start constructing the scene, focusing on form, perspective, and really figuring out the technicalities of the scene. This is probably one of like the most important steps in my process because it's the foundation or the skeleton of what you will be painting. Things are still pretty rough, so after I establish like a clear plan of the composition elements, I'll clean it up and make sure it's easy to understand for painting and adding color to so basically creating like a rough line art and once I finish the lines and adding a little bit more detail I think about like the values and the lighting and possible color palettes that I want to do for this piece doing like swatches on the side or more small thumbnails to figure out what's going to be best I actually show this process in my um, finding the perfect color palette video and it's basically me finding like the right colors and the right values that make the composition like clear to read and yeah I do talk about that more in the finding the perfect color palette video. It's a lot to get into for this specific section but yeah that's pretty much what I do to plan a painting. I figure out like the, the vibe I'm trying to go for. I figure out like uh, different like poses or something just sketching out ideas. I figure out a composition and then I really solidified that composition, do some color swatches and like value studies. And sometimes I combine steps or omit them or go through them slowly or quickly, drafting out ideas and sketches. It depends on the complexity, size and medium of the piece, but that's like the typical process I go through to make the actual painting process a lot easier because I find if I have all these steps in place then in the painting section i can really just focus on like color and just like painting in general not figuring out how to draw something or what to add to the painting if i already have it planned out then yeah just the painting process is so much easier and i really recommend it and that's what works for me so furthermore gwen shire underscore from instagram asks i struggle a lot with starting my pieces and seeing my vision with thumbnails thank you uh, for your response when i encounter this problem myself it is usually because i don't really have a clear vision or motivation with the piece i would consider maybe like writing down explicitly what you want to depict maybe if it's a character 
describing them physically or if it's a scene describe the mood energy and point of view of what you want to depict i find that being more specific can help if things seem too broad or you're feeling lost and things don't exactly match what you have in your head furthermore if it's more of like a skill slash drawing issue which that's the main issue i have with a lot of things like i can imagine like super crazy complex scenes i'm like oh this is so cool but then like i go to draw it i'm like how do i even like start how do i even begin <laughs> with like trying to figure out how to make this scene so if you're having like that sort of issue i would highly recommend compiling references of similar illustrations photographs poses or make your own references that match what you're trying to go for. This can help a lot with not knowing what to do or feeling lost or not even knowing where to start with a certain composition. That's what I do and I find it helps a lot. But ultimately, if you're finding that nothing is matching what's in your head, I would kind of just go for it still. Along the process, you might learn and develop your skills more and ability to draw or create what you had in mind the next time. So sometimes we place like a big expectation on ourselves to make like the perfect scene, design or character. I know I do this all the time and it often ends up um, in me hating everything I make because it, because it doesn't match the expectations of what I had in my head. But I think it's good to just enjoy the process of creating and exploring rather than setting out to get exactly what you intended. Sometimes you can end up being surprised and sometimes even like it more if you kind of let go a bit of that uh, control and expectation. And I would just say maybe take it easy, give yourself room to explore and to have fun. Um, that's basically what I tell myself. Now, it is good to have like, if you're doing like a commission for someone or you're working on a project for your job or working in the industry, it's like you kind of have to like like draw what is like the prompt is or what's laid out for you to do. Like don't like don't go against like that if you're like working for someone else. But if you're just doing this for like yourself and there's not that many like uh, big stakes or if you're just doing this for yourself and you have complete creative control, I would just like, enjoy the process and kind of like let let go a bit of that control like i said and just uh experiment and you'll you'll be surprised with what you can do all right next we have scribble in dibble on instagram uh how do you get a good result similar to the sketch uh thank you for your question now this is a tough question because i feel like so many artists like myself were just like oh the sketch was so good and then we start painting it and then we're just like uh what happened spent all this time on the painting and you look back at the sketch it's just like why do i like the sketch more like i hate this painting that i'm working on i shouldn't have like carried it out into a painting like how, do, how can i keep that similar energy from the sketch and i think this is probably the main goal i have with doing more finished or polished works and i i definitely struggle with this a lot i find it extremely easy to fall in the trap of getting bogged down and lost with rendering or coloring and i end up losing the original vision or energy i had with the sketch ultimately in in my experience i think it's just like it comes with practice and refining your eye and being really intentional about your brush strokes and like what you're adding to the painting and being really conscious about that so I found that keeping an image of the original sketch visible when you're rendering things out can help a lot. I kept my sketchbook open and printed a copy of my line art as I worked through most of my last acrylic painting and it helped me maintain the original vision and keep things clear like the sketch in the long run. Like if things were starting to get lost with like the brush strokes and the marks, I could refer back to the original drawing and like add it back in. Also I feel like having a really refined process can help as well. Trying to render things in as few marks and as little time as possible to keep you from getting stuck in one area for too long and stiffening your drawing can help. It's tough to offer more advice about this since it's what I struggle with a lot, but I hope this helps. It's been helping me not be so perfectionistic and it's helped me to like keep my original vision in mind and just not get too bogged down in the process and just have fun and enjoy the painting process as much as the sketching process. Moving on, um, I'm gonna um, talk a bit more about underpaintings. At Nicole Nader Art asked, over on the snickerdoodle tier, uh, Shay, how do you approach your underpaintings? Your strawberries and blueberries and your newest Saul and Bill painting is amazing. Do you just pick the contrasting color for it? Hi Nader, thank you so much. 
I already gave my spiel about underpaintings in the beginning of this video, so I hope that walkthrough really helped. But for this particular painting, I was really trying to go for a sunset, warm, quote unquote, like romantic mood. Not, ne not necessarily that like Saul and Bill are in love. I mean, they are in love, but like it's more like romantic, like very rich colors. So. Uh, the color of magenta was a perfect fit for the underlying vibe of the painting. And also pink is my favorite color, so I'm biased and I want to use it as much as possible. So I usually think of the intention or mood I want to convey with a painting. Then pick an underpainting color that matches that mood. For example, with like the underpainting studies that I did, the, the blue underpainting one, the blue underpainting paired with the green plant is more serene, cool, and quiet. Green and blue are analogous on the color wheel, which also leads to this harmony and calmness since they're so close together based on their hues. The colors are already close in hue to each other, making them very similar and the perfect pair for like a calmer scene. As for a painting with a magenta underpainting and a green subject, since red and green are complements, it creates more visual tension and contrast between the hues since they're opposite on the color wheel. This tension creates more like of an active scene, more energy, and the magenta under the green creates like a warmer temperature to elude a different feeling. So it, I wanted this this like strawberry saw and blueberry bill painting to be more harmonious and that that background magenta pink not contrasting too much with like the sunset sky but contrasting just enough to like bring a bit more activity with the foliage and stuff like that so it's just experimenting with how these i after talking about this more at the beginning of the video it's just a whole like it's like relationships with the colors like and how those combination of colors affect the mood and the energy of the painting and just ultimately just like experimenting with that and seeing what what sort of combinations would work best with the idea you're trying to get across because so much of like mood from a painting can come from the colors and the values so moving on underpaintings is hard for me to explain i it's just basically i think you figure out your underpainting in like the planning of your painting and it it can affect a lot of how a painting looks also with this sketchbook spread i did like an orange underpainting so that orange warmth really alludes to that like sunny brightness and that fall that rust of like fall and so i wanted that to be like the underlying tone of this sketchbook spread and then on the next page i do a green underpainting which is kind of a fail i made it a bit too much of a saturated green because it was a bit too vibrant for the fall and kind of desaturated green and orange look that i want so so it's like you're not only looking just at hue and like value you you're also looking at saturation because that can affect a lot of how the painting looks. But yeah, I hope that helps some of you guys who are really interested about underpaintings. It's definitely something you could experiment with on your own, but I feel like having like a clear color theory knowledge helps a ton. And I would recommend like looking up videos about color theory. I'll have some link down below if you're interested, but yeah. Basically knowing color theory can help you really have like a good underpainting that like goes with the idea that you want. All right, moving on from that. Um, we're now gonna be talking about like mixing colors. So over on Instagram, a bunch of people were asking about how to like mix colors and keep them from getting muddy. And Izzy over on the um, membership tiers asked, how do you get colors to mix right? Mine always seem to get really muddy and never how I envisioned them. Same with layering. The paint reactivates in the canvas and mixes with the paint on my brush. Hi Izzy, thank you for your question. First, make sure you're regularly cleaning out your water and brushes. This can reduce the amount of unwanted pigment mixing when you're painting and also using a palette knife to mix colors instead of your brush can keep like unwanted pigments from like staying in your brush and getting um, stuck in the bristles and stuff like that. So moving on for reactivating paints, I'm not sure what paint, what you're using to paint. I, I think it's gouache, but I would, I would suggest switching to acrylic gouache or regular acrylic paint 
I use a whole bind acrylic gouache as well as golden heavy body acrylic paints. It's a lot easier to paint on top of, especially when you're, you struggle a lot with reactivating the, the previous layers. Um, you're able to layer more without worrying about lifting up that original layer. You can also practice color mixing by creating a color wheel building up from the primaries. I would really recommend starting off with the like the primary color set from like Holbein Acryla, Acryla Gouache. It, so that's like magenta, cyan, yellow to black and white to achieve all the colors that you need and just like practice like building up a color wheel. I'll have some like reference videos linked down below about like painting a color wheel with gouache and just practicing mixing colors and keeping things like clean. I would also suggest like keeping like maybe like two separate water things, like use one to like really get paint out of your brush and then use like the clear water to like use with like mixing your paint and such. So like it, re it removes a lot of like the muddiness that comes from mixing colors. Moving on, Thadigul over on Instagram asked, I'd love to hear if you know how to make colors lighter without losing their saturation slash lightness. They always get really dull for me when I add white to brighten them. Hi Static! Um, Static also has a YouTube channel. You guys should definitely check out her content. It's like more art content like my channel. For this problem specifically with the acrylic gouache I use, I encounter the exact same problem a lot of the time. I add too much white and it completely zaps the color. For for this illustration, I find that if I'm very frugal with using white, it keeps this from happening. Overall, I tend to paint the really saturated bright areas like the inside of the pumpkins very first, allowing the value being determined by the value of the paper. So like a more water heavy wash of that bright yellow and try not to cover it up or touch it as I paint the surrounding areas. I did this with the figures as well, trying to pre preserve some of that bright yellow to show depth. And I do this a lot with magenta and pink colors in my gouache paintings. It's difficult even with acrylic gouache to paint a saturated lighter value cover color over a darker value so I think this, this just comes with knowing how to handle the paint similar to watercolor. Working light to dark in order to keep the saturation and value that you want. That's how I've solved the issue but if you guys have recommendations for the issue I would love to hear. I basically just if I really want some color to be very saturated and very light I just use the pigment out of the tube mix it a little bit and then add a ton of water and make that my first layer and kind of just build from that and really preserve that area. Speaking of layering, I always try to work thin to thick when using gouache. It's much easier to build up value and color than to go back and fix and paint over, especially when it's gouache or watercolor. So I find working thin, aka like using more water with your paint and then slowly building up to a thicker paint, so less water, paired with preserving like the brightest and most saturated colors throughout the process is what leads to the depth and saturation I want in my gouache paint. At Omori3398 over on the Kofi memberships asked, I already asked this on Instagram, but anyways, how do you make colors fit the palette but also make them stick out enough? How do you make colors look vibrant but it, again not have them stick out in an unpleasant way? I know those are a little bit of a weird question, but it's what I struggle with the most. Hello Omori, thank you for your question. This is a tough question and I struggle with the same thing a lot of the time and I believe solving it comes through knowledge of color theory and color design and ultimately just experimentation and practice. I would consider the values of your painting, taking your painting into a photo editor and switching it to black and white. Is there enough contrast between objects or is everything gray and all the parts of the painting melting together? If that's the case, um, change the values of certain objects to make them stand out from each other. I would recommend sticking to three or four distinct values to keep things simple and I'm gonna link a video to uh, a great Marco Bucci video about this down below. So. Moving on for actually like choosing a palette that's vibrant yet not sticking out, I would pick a few more desaturated muted colors as what you'll mainly be using throughout the piece than saving one or two accent colors to sparingly use throughout the paint. Place them in areas you want to emphasize or bring attention to. I'm also going to link another great video down below um, to explain what I'm talking about. I feel like this this one video by Art by Annabelle, how to choose cohesive colors for your artwork is super helpful in this. On screen, I'll show a recent illustration of Solemn Bill as pirates that I drew last week. 
So for the color palette here, it is mainly that blue and pink hue taking up most of the image. So it's like it's taking most of the colors we see in this painting are mainly that blue and those pink colors. Then the skin tones and then like the white of Saul's clothes and then tiny bits of turquoise and rusty yellow dotted throughout for emphasis. There is a hierarchy of color and different some different amounts of how much I used each hue in the illustration. All in all, I feel like keeping things simple and looking for like pre-made palettes out there for inspiration can really help you to get started and help you to build that knowledge about how colors work together in relation to each other and building that hierarchy. Also, I wanted to mention, like with traditional acrylic paint, acrylic paint does this and therefore this acrylic gouache does this. So darker colors will dry lighter than expected and lighter colors will dry darker than expected. So keep that in mind when choosing colors. I really recommend swatching at first and seeing how the gouache interacts with the paper and how it dries. I like to do this a lot when I'm doing those color thumbnails that I was talking about earlier and it just gives you a better understanding and expectation of of how the colors are gonna look. So for line art with gouache, I got a couple questions regarding line art with gouache and here are some things I like to do when dealing with lines and paint. So I don't ink my drawing or sketch. I do a cleaner sketch and clear drawing to immediately paint on top of. With the look I wanna achieve while painting, I like it a bit more loose and painterly, like how the pumpkins look in this spread as well. And I like to add and I like to add in lines towards the end if I think the painting needs extra definition areas, like with I eventually add more lines into the figures of Bill and Saul. Another tip that I do, I take a picture of the sketch slash lines I will be painting on top of for future reference. Often when I'm painting, a lot of the original drawing gets lost and I forget where certain details go and and how certain features were planned to look like. So taking a picture or scanning the drawing becomes a great reference later on in painting when I wanna add some more definition through line on top of the painting. Typically using a darker color that goes with the palette of the painting and so I can just refer back to my original lines and maintain the structure of the piece and ultimately adding emphasis to areas I want. I got very line heavy with Bill and Saul in the in the sketchbook spread um, to showcase like a line art look with gouache. I sort of feel like the lines are honestly a little too heavy, but it still turned out cute. And I feel like it goes back to that, that idea of keeping the original sketch and the original idea in line. Working larger can be extremely helpful and makes it easier to add details. I definitely felt like it would have been way easier to paint this at a larger scale and I'll, be prob I'll probably be bringing this into Clip Studio for more detail work. Working smaller gives you much more room to mess up because each stroke matters more in relation to the scale so I think I should make it a little bit more easier on myself in the future and paint larger. Now talking about blending. So Star Gamer from my Kofi memberships asked, how do you render paint wise? Like I always get so confused after I put flats down. How do you mix colors and how do you blend? So those are a lot of good questions when starting out. And I don't know if I can answer all of them here, but I'll definitely be going over these topics in hopefully future videos, or I hope that it I cover a bit of it in this video. So after you put down flats, you want to determine where your light source is in your painting so that you can paint your shadows and highlights in consistently. So I would recommend to keep things simple starting out and slowly building up your shadows and then add highlights at the very end. For mixing colors, I would look up color wheels and practice color mixing by making one. You need a good set of primaries and I would suggest cyan, magenta, yellow, black and white to achieve like a wide range of colors. And I'll link some um, color mixing videos down below. As for blending, it depends on what type of paint you're using. So for acrylics, like traditional acrylic paints, you would have to work kind of more wet on wet very quickly before the paint dries. So make sure to pre-mix your colors before tackling the area of the painting you want to blend. And then traditional gouache allows you to blend by reactivating the acrylic gouache doesn't act in the same way. So you really have to get used to accurately assessing how much paint you need in one area. It's definitely something that takes time to learn. But with acrylic gouache specifically, I only mix like a very small amount of that color that I need and then apply it to those areas of the painting 
that require that color. So it's it definitely takes time and practice to understand how much paint you really need. And I still overjudge how much paint I need. But yeah, if it's acrylic gouache, you really have to be careful with conserving your colors and making sure you're gonna use it right then and there because it dries really quickly. But if it's traditional gouache, you can always reactivate it with water. And then I think for oil painting, that, that stuff dries like at a snail's pace so you're completely fine with like blending and stuff but in general i think when blending stuff you don't want to over blend so i think i think this requires like a whole nother video because that's like dealing with like harsh edges and soft edges i would just really before like doing your own blending in your own artwork maybe look at like artists you look up to and kind of copying what areas they blend out and what areas that they don't and try to figure out why they would blend in those areas and then leave harsher marks in other places. And I think it all just boils down to style because a lot of my gouache work has a lot of harsh edges. I like it very blocky and very like, the, bl the brush strokes are very visible and I think that's just like the nature of how I paint. I just paint very, I guess, boldly. I don't really mind that things don't consistently blend together, but yeah, that's all I can say. It's it's a bit difficult. Um, I'm not sure what type of paint you're using, but I really hope that helps. And since you're a part of the Kofi memberships, you could probably just reach out to me and I could offer more information. So yeah, thank you, um, Stargamer, for that. Moving on to talking about opacity and transparency, uh, Dassey from the Kofi memberships asked, I think the main struggle in the past I've had with gouache is knowing what correct consistency will be layer by layer and a bit of patience too. <laughs> I've heard of the tea to cream technique, but it's very vague and hard to keep track of consistent consistency. It's definitely a struggle, but that's the main thing. And thank you for sharing that, Dasi. I totally get your struggle. I would really recommend doing some practice swatches in your sketchbook or with scrap pieces of paper, watercolor paper, or whatever you use for wet media building up color and opacity. So starting off with mostly water and a little bit of pigment and then slowly working up to thicker pick to thicker paint. So your paint to water ratio, when it's when you want like a thin layer, you're going to be using a lot more water. When it's going to be like a thicker, more opaque layer of paint, you're going to be using more paint than water or just a lot more paint in your water mixture. I think it's learned mostly through practice a lot of these things, just like understanding how your paint works, how your specific brand works, and how it's applied to the surface you're working on. So I just would really recommend making little swatches of different opacities of paint for future reference when working on a piece. And yeah, I hope that helps. Mainly just getting used to really working with paint, and I think it becomes more intuitive over time. So most of all, I think I just recommend working like more trans transparent to more opaque. So starting off with really light washes of color, so using a, wa a lot of water to build things up, and then slowly using more pigment and creating like thicker paint layers, if that makes sense. But yeah, and yeah, you can message me as well on Kofi since you're a member and I could explain it a little bit more. All right, moving on. So Doodle Dana on Instagram says, my acrylic gouache is drying too quickly. So with this issue, I do feel like this happens a lot when I'm using acrylic gouache, since it's more like acrylic paints than gouache or oils and dries much faster. It doesn't bother me too much since I've had a lot of experience painting with acrylics on canvas and I'm used to working quickly and using matte medium. And I wonder if there's a matte medium for acrylic gouache. I'll have to experiment to see if adding matte medium could help because that slows down the drying process of my traditional acrylic paints, my um, golden heavy body acrylics. But like with acrylic paint, and like I said with like the blending um, section, um, being a bit more conservative with mixing paint on your palette, mixing only what you can use in that next like five minutes or so really helps with refraining from wasting too much paint that dries too soon. So. I've also seen keeping your palette damp might help as well, like using like a spray bottle or something, but I, I feel like this might dilute the color as well as make pigments mix together unintentionally on your palette. So I don't really have any tips, which kind of sucks. I, I've had so much experience and time using acrylic paint that it doesn't really bother me anymore that they dry that fast. But if you guys have any tips or tricks, please put them down below. I would love to hear from you guys. And if you just have any like tips or tricks in general with any of these 
gouache aspects or questions, I would love to hear so. I also ended up receiving a lot of questions about painting skin tones and feeling lost with that, so I might be planning another video specifically about that. And it would also give me an excuse to paint a ton of character portraits I've been wanting to for a while, so that'd be super fun. So let me know if you guys are interested in that. That's pretty much it for this sketchbook spread and for this q and I ended up doing some touch-ups digitally, messing with the colors and adding in some of that detail that I mentioned earlier. I, I also really want to mention that it's okay if you want to change things digitally or add things digitally. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. It's a, especially if you work so small and you want to add in like little details, I think that's, I feel like it's a benefit to your art if you feel like you can add something digitally in that really competes completes the piece. I think that's great. So yeah, I realized I didn't even paint, speaking of like adding things digitally, I realized I didn't even paint the mouse traditionally. So I made sure to paint that in digitally. And ultimately, I think it turned out super cute. I think the left side is kind of more successful than the right. The right page was inspired by an acorn squash soup I made with my boyfriend a couple weeks ago, weekends ago. And I really love the idea, but the composition I feel like could be a bit better a bit more clear it's I, I don't know it's just not matching what i had in my head so and it's the underpainting was too much of a saturated green even though i like showed my digital plan it didn't exactly translate into the traditional which is fine that just takes practice and sometimes i don't always get it right and that's okay so it was still super fun to officially finish my sketchbook with this spread and made me really excited to continue to use gouache in the future i'm Nowhere near an expert in the medium and mainly use it for sketchbook work, but it'd be really cool to push myself to create more fully finished pieces with the medium on like actual good like watercolor paper or something like that. So all in all, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it helpful and learned a lot from this. I know there's still so much I want to learn. You can find more of my art on Instagram as well as as well as check out my shop for stickers, free digital brushes and more. And thank you once again to my monthly Snickerdoodle members and Sticker Club members for for the continuous support to find videos like this and my art creation so i love making videos and with your support it allows me to continue to create this content so if you'd like to see more and help support my channel consider checking out my ko-fi membership so thank you to my sticker club members air alisa r Anne is confused blue swanson kaylin d charu demon sketchnin emmy emily emma gabriella c grace ink palette izzy jason julie katie kent Liz, Lucas S, Lux, Mar, Max Decided, Mayday V, Mr. Goat Was Here, Nat, Amori, Pilot, Seiche, Shay, Shelf Cat, Sir Knight, Star, and Wits Wixer. And thank you so much to my Snickerdoodles. Big Chungus, Chipu, Cup of Honey, DeAndrea, Dassey, Day on the Cow, Heather C, Catherine F, Mango Dust, Nicole Nader Art, Peachy Pie Peeps, Rin Kenobi, Star Gamer, Tammy, Vixen, and Balancey. Thank you all so much for the support for my artwork and content creation. I will continually be keeping um, these shout outs up to date, hopefully weekly as best as I can. All right, that's it for this video. Have a great rest of your day. Maybe do some gouache painting or draw in your sketchbook and yeah, drink some water. <laughs>